What's going on, guys? This podcast is brought to you by manscaped.com forward slash RBP. And I just want to let you know about the Lawnmower 4.0. And if you use code RBP, you get 25% off. I'm going to show you guys the website really quickly. If you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can check out all the cool stuff they have. They have the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the Lawnmower 4.0 with the detachable head where you can put the shaver on. And then you can also get the Performance Package 5.0 that has the boxers. It has the crop so soother. It has everything in it, the nose trimmer and all that. So guys, get to Manscaped, support the podcast, support Manscaped for sponsoring us. Use code RBP at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Hey, Polly. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Not bad. Not bad. I got a good sleep last night. I um, I, I just had woke, hiccups. I just woke up. Did you? Like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> really? I set my alarm because I, I didn't want to sleep in too late. You had, but, the, hiccup, uh, you had the hiccups again? Why did you go bury, no. bury 100 cookies? I, well, I uh, they went away last night. I had them up until about 11 o'clock at night, and then they suddenly went away, and I went to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I, I did it all night. Wait a minute. You, <laughs> you had the hiccups when you left the gym. They stayed yeah. all the way till eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, I told you I had them the night before too, right? Yeah, yeah, all night. Wait a minute. So they, while you had the, <laughs> while you had the hiccups, you binged again. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. The, the kids wanted pizza. <laughs> so, so you but... sat. So you sat there with the hiccups, just stuffing your face with pizza. This pizza actually slowed down the hiccups for a little while. Oh, that's so, a secret. <laughs> so I, uh, I purposely, uh, hey, yeah, hey, the hair's looking good. Yeah, look at that. Got a got a fresh haircut. You know, it's thick. Yeah, looking thicker. Wait, you didn't get a fresh haircut on top. I didn't touch the top. I just cut the sides down. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. The top's looking thick. Yeah, <laughs> Listen to this, Paul. So had, yeah, Paul's had the hiccups for like a day and a half. Two days almost. Yeah, so, I, I was just actually watching a TikTok video on this. That it's uh, you got to do something with. Uh, like stimulating your 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 butthole or something to get rid of it. <laughs> just, just listen. No, try that thing. next. The real okay. thing. You gotta okay. like. You gotta stimulate your finger in your ass ball. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. All right. No, well, this guy. Good. So two nights ago, not last night, yeah. night before, he starts binging. The binging causes the hiccups. What'd you eat? Uh, a bunch of cookies and uh, geez, what else are you into? Cookies oh, is your thing, eh? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, so he hiccuped. All the way from yesterday after we trained till eleven o'clock at night last night. We went away. Okay, so let me tell you first. Ian. Go ahead. I binge. Like, I binge. Just like holding your breath. I tried that. Yeah, I tried the water tricks. You know, tried all kinds of things. Nothing worked. Um, it's happened to me before. It's not the first time. Um, so anyway, um, Friday night I binge, got the hiccups. Um, couldn't sleep all night because I was hiccuping. So Saturday went away in the morning for a little while. Um, then me and Fu had worked out, and I came back halfway through the workout. So it lasted all night long. So I binged again last night, and then it went away. Wait, you binged two nights in a row? Yeah. Yeah, I'm but I, find it, I find it hilarious that he binged while he had the hiccups. And then, they, and then he tells no, me. Just... Knowing that's also what caused it. Yeah, but the pizza, actually, so this is what I did. I know I eat too fast. I, I think that's part of the reason why. That's, I got that's the... what it is. Yeah. That's for yeah. sure the reason why. Yeah. So I ordered a pizza, <laughs> and I purposely chewed every piece, like, extra long. Like a normal, normal person. Like a normal person. Like a normal person yeah, like probably would, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it went away. It's gone now it's gone now. Were you hiccuping it's gone right now while you were eating? So it went away, and then uh, then I started getting the desserts, and the desserts brought it back. I think it has something to do with. Sugar. Wait a minute. What I'm asking is, when it came back, were you still hiccuping and eating at the same time? Yes. So you didn't even take a break. You're just like hiccuping. <laughs> I was so frustrated with it. At one point, I did puke again, though. Paul, why don't you stop I eating? Because sometimes it seemed to help, sometimes it didn't. It seemed to make it worse. It's not. But, it's not so helping. I, couldn't I bet. Quite put I, my finger on it. Okay, so I bet you it has something to do with GERD and acid reflux combined. Yeah. So eat, I took yeah, a but tablespoon. Eating, but but eating is only going to make that all worse. I took a tablespoon of uh, apple cider vinegar, and that seemed to help a little bit of it too. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the root cause of it is the binging. Well, I think it was more eating too fast. No, it's not. It's the amount of food and eating too fast. Yeah. It sounded. It sounds like you have have like a type of GERD or acid yeah. reflux. Yeah, but and I do get acid reflux once in a while. 
So let's ask the let's ask the doctor. Yeah. Ben, how are you? This, guy, this, guy, you? this guy's had hiccups for like two days and he keeps binging to try and get it to go away. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's logical. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> they worked for a little while. <laughs> they did. It it did. The hiccups also were... caused it in the first place. You, you, just, quell. you just quell in the hiccups with food. They're like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone now, at least. What's going on, Ben? How are you? Good, man. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, a lot's going on. So, it's getting fucking hot in Texas already. Can you believe it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. It was 90 yesterday. We are supposed to do another appearance in El Paso, and I don't think we're going to be able to do it, which I'm not overly upset about because it's like 120 degrees there. The, the so, only thing we have already? Paso, it wasn't humid, though, right? No, no, not already. But when we, when we went there oh. last time, it was like... Anyway, listen, guys, we're not going to do um, a full podcast today. What we're going to do is talk about a couple topics, uh, I don't know, maybe like an hour max. So let's get into <clears throat> let's get into what we want to get into first. Uh, first thing, really quickly, Paul, I thought you'd be overly excited because there's a new Italian guy on the, on the scene. His name's, oh. uh, where is his name again here? Oh, here it is. Well, Simone Bast- Bastanelli. I don't know how long he's, I don't know how long he's been around, but I figured you'd be happy. He's Italian and huge. I'm happy. Is that his nickname? Big Simo? <laughs> yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stage shot. Looks pretty okay. good. Hey, look at those legs. Jeez. Uh, I guess shoulders. I guess you Italians can do something good. <laughs> um, I'll be watching for him. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to go to, I don't know. Where do you guys think the best pitchers are? Sulios or like uh, Ozzy yeah. Tries? Yeah, go to Sulios. He's got some. Sulos. Is it Sulio? Sulos? Suelo. Suelo? Suelose. That's fucking way better than Sulios. Oh, that sounds sexy. <laughs> say it again. I think it's actually <laughs> I think we all say it completely wrong. Suelose. That's amazing. <laughs> you just definitely made that up, but it sounds way better now. No, I don't think I did. I, I'll have to ask him about it. Probably said it something like that. I always uh, say Sulios. I always, I, I always do too. But Soy Lose. I say, I say Sulos. Wait, wait. I know isn't that. his name? Isn't his name Suleiman? Yes, it's Suleiman or Su- I can't remember exactly how you okay, say. Okay, okay, okay. Suleiman. <laughs> if you're watching, <laughs> Suleiman. <laughs> we're not. We're not, not. We're not making fun of you. Definitely all. not watching. No, we all. Okay, but if somebody's watching this, that's a fan of his. Please send it to him. <laughs> Can you send me a voice note with how your name is pronounced? Okay. Hey, I'm gonna, it wait, 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 wait. I'm a, I, let, me, let me text him. I'm going to ask right. him. I'm getting yeah, we'll get it right now. Yeah. Or even to spell it out. For I'm, allowed, I'm allowed to laugh because people make fun of my name all the time. So I'm I'm right there with him. Yeah, my last name right. gets butchered a lot, so I can say something. Yeah, people call you Lauzon all the time. Hey, buddy, the, we are yeah, on uh, a podcast real quick. But can you <laughs> – how do you pronounce your name? Is it – Hang on, Ian, Ian, how are you saying it? <laughs> no, don't make me <laughs> Okay, let me know. How do you actually pronounce your name? The Suelos. correct way from the horse. Your Instagram person. handle. Your Instagram handle. Oh, your Instagram handle, yeah. How, how are you pronouncing it? Because and, what, and, and, what's his, on it. and what's his real name? And what is your real name? We need we need names. We need names, Sulios. <laughs> Sulios. <laughs> Suelos is way better. <laughs> Suelose. Suelose, that's it. <laughs> okay. So we're on Sway Lose's page, and okay. Yesterday was pretty a uh, pretty awesome battle between these three: it was, um, Rafael, Good Vito, Antonio. And man, I think it's like the three people that are different but all awesome. Yeah, and I think you have a whole bunch of different opinions about who the best guy was. I, I saw I saw a lot of different people. Uh, saying different things. So, with that being said, um, I'm not going to give my opinion. Paul, since you're the judge, <coughs> the IFBB judge, what did you, what did, how did you see the shakeout? And I know you didn't watch the live stream. You're only going by the photos you saw. So, yeah, some we're, are better we're than others. Before, just so we don't have to say that every time, anybody listening, okay. we're prefacing all of our opinions with live stream or Instagram photos, videos. Okay, I thought it, I thought they the top three was. I thought they had it right in the, from what I seen. Uh, I thought Raphael had the best package of size, conditioning, and shape. Um, Tony will look crazy from the back. Uh, and from the front, he's got some incredible poses. I think from the side, he gives up a little bit. Um, so I think, you know, I think he was placed appropriately. Vito, I think, made a pretty impressive debut. 
Um, I think he's got, I think he silenced a lot of people who, you know, had doubts as to whether he's going to show up, uh, Ian. you know, what he's going to show up like, <laughs> particularly Ian. <yeah. laughs> um, I, I put him in third. I still, he came exactly like I expected. No, yeah, he no. shut up. Come on. I, I, I think he, uh, like, I think I'll, I, myself, I had my doubts too, because I thought some of his pictures, you know, looked a little Well, off. that's only because you were, because Ian convinced you that he was, <laughs> and, because know, we, and because we've been fooled by a couple others in the past. So we were being right. hesitant. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I thought I thought he uh I thought he showed up and, and made a great debut. And yeah. I think he's gonna I think he's got a bright future. Um do you guys think Okay, he, so, he, he, so so Paul, can I ask sorry, can I ask you yeah. a few a couple more specific questions? Yeah. What was it you just said Tonio was full, complete and aesthetic and everything head to toe. Um what do you think how do you think Raphael beat Tonio, I know, I know. Um, was Good Vito second? I didn't get to see the final placings. Oh, I thought he was third. No. Good Vito, Good Vito third. third. Okay, so what do so you I think? Thought. What do you think put Raphael above uh, Tonio if he's just too big? Too big for him. Okay, but um, hold on, but hold on a minute. So let me. Okay, I'm just going to push back a little bit. Okay. So when we look at a show like the Arnold, and we see Samson and uh, Hadi. Samson is bigger overall structurally than uh, Hadi, mm -hmm. but Hadi being more conditioned and whatever else you want to say beats Samson. Mm, thicker. Why, why aren't we using that same consistent standard in this case? Because I think pound for pound, Hadi is just as big, if not maybe even a little bit bigger than Samson in some areas. Okay. Um, okay. Where that's not the case with Raphael and Antonio, I don't think. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ian. Do you have any, anything to say about that? Which part? Well, just... Specifically, specifically, what do you think Raphael did to beat Tonio? Was it just sheer size? Yeah, this is tough because, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when you watch, especially in the first shots, your eyes do gravitate to Raphael. He's definitely rounder and fuller from the front. Um, you know, he's got lots of pop. He's got great shape. Uh, he's a structurally bigger guy. Um, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure that I agree with the call. Um, you know, I'm I. The more I watch it, I mean, his conditioning from the back was like pretty fucking lackluster, to be honest. Like, I saw some pictures of his glutes and hands that like they look like a guest posing at best from the back. Um, and I think you should be judged in some aspect. Like, I know it's who's the best on that day, but I also think when you were significantly better not that long ago at another show, and yeah. there's a regression there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, th I think that should be somewhat taken into account. I, I don't know. I mean, you're still judging just who they're compared to. So I guess that doesn't really matter. Um, but you know, it was, it was definitely not his best package. And Tonio looked really good. He was super sharp in all poses. Um, do I think he lost some poses to Raphael? Definitely. I think he needs to work on his posing in a few shots, like his side poses. Uh, he's definitely not doing himself any like his side tricep. Yeah. It could be an awesome shot for him. We've, he's just like crunched in small. Like can I really... can, can I interrupt for a second? Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, we've, go ahead. we've talked about this for like three shows now with Tonya. Yeah, and I don't know why he doesn't change it. I don't know if anybody else is telling him, but it's all some... the very very crunched together side yeah. shots are not yeah. helping. No, and he, his posing is great, and his. His front double, front lat, abs and thighs, back shots, how he stands up yeah. very upright in those back shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He hits those back shots better than anybody, you know, and he mm -hmm. opens that back up so nicely and so flat, <laughs> like it looks really good. Um, but those side shots, he's just really not, like for a guy that does have, you know, for a smaller guy, have really good front to back thickness and roundness. Um, he's not displaying that even close to his Okay, game. so time out. I just want to go back. So just a very pointed question. I know you're breaking down everything, but this is specifically – how did Rafa beat Tonio? Is it size or is there something you can yeah, point I mean, to? The, 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 the answer is, is going to be size. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously he has excellent shape. And I think when you, you know, the shape in the front double and the front lat is very impressive. Um, he's good. He was a little thicker and fuller on the side shots and he presented them better. So yeah. if you're going to make a case for it, it's going to be size and roundness and, and depth to the physique um, in the front and the side shots. Cause he, he certainly lost the back shots. Yeah. Ben, when you're looking at a show, I know you're not a judge, but you've been watching bodybuilding for 20 years or whatever. So you're just as, you know, articulate and intelligent about the stuff as any other judge. So when you're looking at this, um, do you, like when, when you look at that, are you looking at it with the same eyes I am in a sense of Tonio is almost the same size as Raphael 
muscularity wise. So what is the, like, what is the difference here? Because I don't, I know it's iffy. I know, look, he might be giving up a few pounds. Ian, I, I see you shaking your head, but like, how did you see it? Do you see Rafa ahead of, of Tony or, or did you have it the other way around? I have it as Rafa lost less shots than the other two. If that makes sense. Okay. That's actually the question I was going to lead to. And it, it slipped my mind. I can agree. Is there, that. is there, is there, we always do this in bodybuilding now, but me and Paul have discussed this a lot. That's not really, and I know that's kind of how Tyler breaks it down in, in his breakdowns. So it's tough not to say it's not how we do it, but there's more to judging than just pose for pose. And I think a lot of people that are new to bodybuilding are looking at it that way. Like let's go it's seven poses, break them all down. Who won what, but we know that's not the only thing. So why, why are we doing that? And if it's not the only thing, does Tonio win like an overall look? Because he was even front to back. Well, I, I when I say he lost like more, po- I, I, I'm not literally meaning like pose to pose and counting yeah. tally wise. I just meant like if you're just going to go for a, an all in like way up everything conditioning this that I think Rafa gave. And I always, if I'm coaching, I always um picking apart weaknesses, right? So I'm stacking up weaknesses rather than strengths, right? right. So I think Rafa had fewer weaknesses, like conditioning compared to the other two. This is how my brain judges it, right? So conditioning compared to the other two, he was behind. Then outside of that, if you look at his balance and the physique, he's ahead because the other two have more standout body parts and shots that are more, that have better strengths. Yeah. But they're not as balanced. They're not that that whole physique as a as a body built physique isn't as complete to me. Okay, I'm gonna, that, that matters. So I'm it's gonna, like completeness. It's completeness and size. I think Rafa has just had too much. But those other two could easily have. Yeah, I mean, so I'm gonna look, you, from the back as well. You you're really exposing Rafa. Yeah, I'm gonna throw my my opinion. So side shots. I'm gonna say that you guys are totally right. Um, only necessarily, not necessarily because they're better, but Tony was doing himself a disservice in how he's making himself look kind of paper thin from the front and back, honestly, guys, and I'm, I could be way off, but Rafa does not look muscularity wise bigger to me, except maybe in the chest, maybe in the shoulders, maybe, but for sure the chest. The quads, that, he's got really nice round quads that have some good detail. I mean, Tonio's got awesome so, quads. Tonio's got great quads too. And I, and I just don't, don't see quite as much, you know. I don't know if I agree with that, Ian. I mean, we'll go, it's going to go back around, but especially from the back is where I see it. Yeah, Rafa, the back is quite a big discrepancy. When you look, when you look at the back, their backs might be kind of even. I think Tonio's is better, but especially from the bottom half, I feel like Tonio is better. And it's more, is more balanced in the conditioning and. The size. I mean, when you look at the size of Raphael's back versus his hamstring thickness and calves, it doesn't translate the same as Tonio's does. Yeah. So ah, that's man. that's kind of where I'm. But then you see the side shot, and you see where Tonio's giving up a lot of space. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, I wonder sometimes. It's like if you did go shot for shot, I don't even know if I see Rafa winning all the shots because I gave both the back shots. No, he definitely doesn't win all the shots. So. No, no, no. But I mean, a majority of shots. Sorry, because I give both the back shots to Tonio. Yeah. yeah. So that's two. And then if you give both the side shots to Rafa, now you got to go from the front. So I guess Rafa would probably take one or two of the front shots. So he probably does win the majority. He has that chest thickness, which is compared, if you're going to compare with three, he's overwhelmingly thick like that in the side, chest and shoulders. That side, yeah, that side chest is Rafa's. Yeah. Yeah. Like Vito's shoulders need to come up and Tonio's yeah. chest is, is lacking in, in those shots. So, but this shoulders. is, but this is the confusing part. Paul, I'll let you. See if you can talk about it a little bit. Yep. Is it just shot for shot? Like, is that what we're ultimately going on? Well, um, there's criteria, right? So the, the criteria that's taken consideration, uh, not only if the, for the in each individual pose, but also for the overall package. So, you know, uh, like, you know, and we all know what those are, you know, size, shape, conditioning. Um, so you throw those three criteria into the mix with the poses, and then you come up with your overall, with your with your winner. Right. Um, so I, I think they both play um, uh, an, um, a factor in your overall decision on who's you're going to put there. So sometimes when it's really, really close, and they're both almost equal size, shape, conditioning, or at least, you know, 
know that um, the advantages of each are yeah. pretty much balanced with each other, yeah. then you might go pose for pose. In my opinion, in this particular show, Rafa had the advantage in those three criterias. Yeah. Um, just a little, just like because he had the size advantage. Conditioning was Tonio for sure, but shape you could pretty much call that even on those two. At least I don't from know. the front. See, this is where I kind of disagree with you guys. So, and. I, this is no offense to Rafa. I think he's got a beautiful physique. I'm just a really big fan of Tonio. So this is my own bias showing through. But like, let's say we're talking about weaknesses. What weakness does Tonio have other than maybe he's hitting a couple shots the wrong way? Tonio's Tonio's very balanced. There's but nothing think, missing. No, there's and nothing it's, missing. And it's even. I agree, I agree with you he's, on this. Yeah. His, but, but his the, chest for me could be could it, be a lot. Could be rounder for sure. That would definitely help. It could be routed. I think that would help his side poses and his front poses. Because okay. just like Rafa has that advantage there. So that's one advantage for sure. Okay. But the whole okay. big that advantage is, you know, you could debate. So let me, let me ask you a more specific question. Let's say you're doing shot for shot, right? And let's say like we agreed Rafa wins one or two poses more than Tonio. Mm -hmm. But then you take the overall physique into consideration and you're like, yeah, but this guy's entire back is better than this guy's entire back. So, um, but where do you see, do you, like, I, I agree that Tony is better from the back right now, but particularly, it's, I, for me, it's mostly, like, Rafa's hamstrings need to come up, and I think that's his biggest problem from the back right now, that and conditioning from the back, a little bit more detail from the back, but his back itself is, is pretty well developed. It just doesn't show enough density yet and conditioning, I think. When I look at the photos, uh, I, I can't, I'll go to a different screen, just maybe we can see something a little bit more I, close up. When I look at the photos... Go ahead, Ben. Sorry. I was going to say, if Rafa had the conditioning that we're all wanting to see from from the back, I think his back looks even better. I think he's back. You'll see the density in his back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, guys. Like, this is... It's, look at right. It does look pretty dense in the lats. Look at Tonio's physique there. Like, this is... I agree. It, it's it's, ab it's absolutely that incredible. Double. The shape in that back double is beautiful. So balanced. It tapers in so nicely. You know? He poses it so perfectly, standing nice and tall and upright. Like it's such a nice back shot. Yeah, I don't disagree. Like I think Tony wins that pose all day. But, yeah, um, but, but remember we talk about degrees, like yeah, what ten eights. Degree, yeah, ten eights versus ten nines yeah. using using like fighting analogy. Right. If he's if he's got such a better backside, like it's a ten eight both shots. Doesn't that? I don't like, say it's a to, like though. to me. Like to me, let's say this. Let's say this. Let's say Rafa. What are we going to give him? Five of the seven poses. Let's both say, both, sure. both back shots. Maybe both front shots. Maybe the ab and thigh. Let's say you give him five. Let's say you give Tonio both the back shots. Is it too much to overcome if your entire backside is better? If you lost three three poses, unless or, or, it's five, or so, five or five poses, unless those are ten seven poses, then okay. I don't think so. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So he's got to really demolish him from the back for him to be be able to overcome. It's got to be the poses that he lost. It's got to be it's Ryan Coleman back, back versus okay. an amateur back. You know, it's got to be I got you. like that. I got you. The only, I got you. The only issue with with this for me, and like, look, I I I'm a huge Rafa fan. Obviously, I've made that apparent over the last like you know few months. Um, it, the conditioning for me was just really subpar across almost all the poses, even in the front shots from the better quality stuff, especially from the back. His side shots it didn't show too much. Um, but it, it really just wasn't where it needed to be from like a dryness standpoint that I, I don't know. It's tough for me because I still do see him winning a lot of shots. Um, but the conditioning was still c considerably down for me, you know, I mm. think in a, in a tougher lineup, and this you know, honestly is to... making it look a lot better than I saw it in a lot of pictures in this too. So maybe if this is what it looked like in person, but I, I'm not positive on that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I, not to disrespect the others, but in a tougher lineup, I think that his conditioning would have been more exposed. I agree. Yeah. So if you guys you let think, me, ask, you, let me, hang on, hang on. Can I go, can I go ask ahead, Ben? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think he would have been more exposed? I think in like Tony, like you, you think Tony and Vita won in pretty decent condition uh, at an IPB level? Like were they not exposing him already? No, they, I but think not enough. I think to overtake him is all I mean. I think like if he would have show up in that conditioning at the Arnold's, he's not yeah. third. I think that's what Paul's saying is the size of somebody else plus the conditioning might have been too much for mm -hmm. him. But because he was bigger, he got away with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed. I think yeah. you're saying Antonio and Vita weren't. In, weren't no, in no, no, no. Think, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think. Didn't mean, uh, I think they're okay. saying because the the because size difference, the conditioning, they they were able to like ignore the conditioning. Yeah, it's it's really where it comes down to is that his discrepancy in size, and their shape. Let's say was pretty even. His discrepancy in size was bigger than Tonio's was in conditioning in some regard. Is really what we're saying. But I'm not. I'm man. I'm really honestly. This one's a tough for me. Like I. I really have a hard time picking between the two in this because I, 
you know, as an overall package, I do prefer Tonio's at the show. I think his conditioning and balance and, and stuff was really good. But in a lot of the shots, my eyes are still drawn towards Rafa, and I still do see him winning the shots when I, like, break it down pose for pose. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to do a pose for pose, I still do see Rafa having the edge there. Um, but the overall package, I doesn't it leaves a lot more to be desired to me than than Tonio's does. That's the that's the struggle I'm having is if I break it down post for pose in bodybuilding and bodybuilding standards, yeah. Rafa probably wins at least four, maybe five of the yeah, shots. Yeah, because I mean the front shots are, you know, I I think he has them, and if not, they're very close and an edge towards him. Um, the side shots, he wins both of those. He loses both back shots. I think he still wins the abs and thighs and the most muscular. So it's right. like so, but this is the struggle I'm having with you, Ian uh, is. In bodybuilding criteria, post for pose, Rafa is the winner. But I, I don't think it was a very but, good package. But overall, yeah. But that's why I'm trying to explain to people that sometimes judging isn't just pose for pose. Yeah, but then it's also like in that same breath, it's not all humans are created equally. And you don't have to be like just as good in every criteria to still be a better bodybuilder. You know, I think I think my I think I'm just looking at it through my personal bias. I think I personally like. I award a lot to Tonio for being so balanced front I, to I, back. I, I'm 100% on the same page as you here. But yeah. I think that's why I'm leaning yeah. towards, I, I think I would have had Tonio first. I know his his clavicles, his chest is not even small. It's more that his clavicles are a little narrow. Yeah. Um. But, but he's not a big guy. Like yeah, he's yeah. He's not, oh, right. But he's a smaller structural guy, you know, and, and Rafa right. is a big guy. He's, you know, three or four inches taller. He's a lot wider in the clavicles. Yeah. Uh, and, and that makes your eyes draw drawn to him immediately, especially in the front yeah. shots. When you start in a front double, front lat, your eyes go to him. He's got more pop in the chest. He's got those sweeping yeah. quads. He's got great arms, nice long, you know, midsection. Um, he's very impressive and your eyes go to him. So it's kind of like they stay there and then you go front shots. Okay, he has those side shots. Okay, he still has. And then by the time you get to the back, you're like, ah, he already won more shots, you know? Yeah, you got Antonio's playing catch up almost. Antonio's playing catch up, but then I, sorry, go ahead, Ben. Well, I was going to say, they've been pretty consistent though with that though, right? I mean, go back to even where Dishal we were at was the Tampa where Akeem versus Kamal, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Akeem was, was light years behind in terms of conditioning, but was so big and overwhelming. And still has great shape. wait a minute. Happens. Okay, but that's a good example. When I look at when I look at um, the guy who won Tampa, what's his name? I'm sorry, you just said yeah, Akeem. it. Akeem. Akeem. When I look at Akeem and I look at Kamal, Akeem to me is way bigger than Kamal, like muscularity, like muscularity wise. You don't see the discrepancy. That I big. don't see that discrepancy <laughs> in actual muscularity, like pound for pound between Rafa and Tonio. No, no, that's, no, where, that's where it was more extreme. No, no, like no, no. I, then, this is yesterday no, no. was more like I, still here, an appearance, but in still an appearance of side, especially in the so a shot like the side chest or the side try, even though it may not be that big in certain shots, in some shots it does look quite dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, this is honestly a really tough one, man. Like I, I would have a hard time judging between these two. Like, go ahead. Paul. I wonder. I wonder how different this show would have been though had Tonio hit his side shots differently. Yeah, I thought that too. His side chest, side his, his side chest wasn't bad. It was more the side tricep that was just yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, and, and it's tough too because I did talk to quite a few people who were there in person. Uh, and a lot of them thought that Tonio was the clear winner. So really, it's it, tough. Yeah, they said that his conditioning showed that it was dramatically better hey, in person. Uh, go to um, go to Jacoby's. Different... What? Jacoby put some. Could you put Jacoby put up some pictures of him of Tonio and Rafa on stage, and they're, they're real high quality pictures. Yeah, I saw. Just take a look at those. I'll go. I'll go there in a sec. I... One sec. I just want to. So the side chest looks like it's good. Like there's not really anything yeah, it's, missing. It's, definitely it's one not of the bad. Poses, but it's not. It's he's not. still kind of pulling back though. It, it's, this, it's though, not bad. He needs to fix a lot. Yes, yeah. He's doing himself a service there. Yeah. But then this is just like. I think he's got one of those physiques that, like similar to Samson, where you have to be in person to truly appreciate the. But that is just incredible. You know? I don't know, Paul. Yeah. I when I look at this, I don't see this that. This last oh, spread's crazy. I don't too. see the, the oh. I don't see the oh. I got to be there in person. I'm looking at I, this going, holy fuck. From the back, it shows more to me. From the front is where I seem to. I don't know if the details quite as apparent as it would be as in person. I don't like how he hits that either. He's crunching. Yeah, out. that too. Yeah. His posing needs his posing. Most muscular too. He's bringing his shoulders in. Yeah. So yeah. this is yeah. You know, he can keep a lot more width there if his hands and knuckles are together rather than clasped. You know what? You know what's crazy about this is um, go to Jacoby shots. Yeah. I'm going. You know what's crazy about this is I I think both guys, and we'll get to Vito in a minute, but I think both guys did themselves a disservice by not posing properly. Uh, and we'll go through Vito Rafa, in a minute Rafa as well. Or are you Vito. talking about Vito? 
No, no, sorry. I'm talking about Vito and okay. uh oh, I and, agree with Vito for sure. Yeah, yeah, Vito Vito needs a lot of work with his posing, but we'll go there in a minute. Let's take a look at these photos. Well, those are good pictures. See, but you can see like the you know, he still does have more pop on that front pose, but I mean the polish of of Tonio is very the skin, the skin yeah. texture, skin texture and shit. And then is just wait wait till yeah. you see from the back though, you know? Yeah, the like, back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This that, is... that conditioning in the glutes is is like Look, I love Rafa, and I would love to just give him the nod on this, but that's just not acceptable conditioning by my standards, you know? The lower lats, the lower lats into the lower Yeah, there's a lot of there. singles yeah. there, and the glutes, like, almost don't have a single one in them, and his hamstrings either, you know? Yeah. And, like, look at this. Look at the texture of the skin on Tonio's back and side leg and hamstring versus, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. see that dryness and the thin texture in, in the side leg and the hamstring. But, but look at it. They say the hamstring and the adductor where they're splitting. And yeah, they're so way like off. I can still make a case. I still give that to Rafa. I mean, you know, I think they're pretty even in a lot of ways there, and I think he's still bigger. Um, you know, that what? one's a little closer there. Especially yeah, it was close. I like Tony on that pose. You know, just I, I, it's funny. I I was actually saying Rafa's better in this pose. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Still, I like do, the X-frame I still on Tony for Rafa in the front shots. Yeah. Well, the reason like, the reason I'm saying it is if you look at for people that are watching that just don't kind of know why we're picking what we're picking. I'm picking Rafa in the shot because his most dominating body parts are his chest and shoulders. And they're wonderful. Yeah. And and when you and you do the front last spread properly, you can see the thickness of his chest and the width well, of front, his shoulders. The front last spread too is also a shot that is like a fucking game changer for guys with high lat insertions. Like the Chris yeah. Bumpheads yeah. of the world, yeah. if you have high lats and have a decent chest when you show that long waist with the high like cobra lats like that, <clears throat> It's always going to be a good pose for guys like that. But when then, I look, but I'm, from lap. when I look at this, the reason Wolf, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when I look at this, the reason, <laughs> the reason Rafa is winning this is like the first thing my eye is drawn to is the thickness of the chest. Yeah, yeah. and I'm That's like, like I said, I Tony, this is a great Tony pose has... for Tonio, but I think you yeah. know the thickness in the chest, the lats, everything, um, is is a little more. But then these are, you know, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. especially this oh, last spread, like. I want to see a I side. I spread. want to see a so side good. tricep. Yeah, but like even the red delts on his on his uh, lap spread is there's so much there's, more. There's no so, there's no side tricep in there. I wonder if that's on purpose. Um, you go and tag photos, maybe. Oh, you're on Jacoby's page. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to give a shout to fucking Justin Rodriguez is working with him too, and he's honestly looks really good going into the last. Jacoby. The last updates I saw of me looked really good. Midsection's looking better. His conditioning looks like it's in a really good spot. I'm excited to see him in Detroit. Okay, so he's working. He, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead, Paul. I saw, is this a new coach for Justin? He, he was with who before? Yeah, it's the same guy who coaches Tonio. They're both. Oh, the okay. So William Martins ended up, like we said, uh, Ian, his um, waist was a little too thick as usual. Like he, in some of the shots on Instagram, he was able to hide it, but on stage, it just, just throws off his shape. Like his quads yeah. don't look big. Like it, all the things are, are lost because of that waist. You can see, yeah. you can see him doing things to try and like hide it by leaning forward and like, these well, especially when you're staying next to Tonio and Raphael who have like fucking zero yeah. waist. Does anybody know who this is? Uh, uh, I saw his name. Did anybody didn't Alan, Alan bon 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 Bondeman. Bonadaman, Bonadaman. Sway Lose. What do you mean um, <laughs> oh, did he answer? What's the? Did he answer no, that? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> I just said it because I like saying it. Okay, uh, let's go to my favorite guy that Ian loves to hate. I wait. Okay, let's be. <laughs> let's relax here. Okay, wait a minute. I wait put a minute. I put him in third in this show, and he showed up third. I thought he would be good. I didn't think he was going to be as good as he looked on Instagram, and he wasn't. He was okay. still. It was an right. excellent pro debut. Oh I think come he's a on, Ian! Just admit that you were a little wrong. I was a little bit wrong from the back. From <laughs> he the looked, back he looked he, very good. Yeah, he looked very good. He looked good. Especially in the back lat spread, he was way better than I thought he would. So be. I'll just, I'll just say that. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. I was going to say the picture of his lat spread, the picture, not the video, but the picture yeah. of his lat spread. And he's the one that, that uh, Chris put up. Like hardness, like you'd see the veins and the hardness in his back. We're gonna, his, we're gonna go through the video. I just want to. I just want to say one thing, if Vito is listening or anybody is going to send this to him. I think he was fucking phenomenal. I think what held, him, what held him back, the reason I don't think he won, because I do think he could have won. Yeah. I do. I thought he was absolutely amazing. The reason he didn't win is because of his posing. Yeah. Well, I, I don't like think he, he, I think there's Not entirely, not entirely, but maybe I'm going a little overboard because I'm biased. But the front lat spread killed him. Like we're gonna go through the sh we're gonna yeah, go through the see him, yeah yeah we'll go through the yeah. shots. I think I think he was a little he pushed the conditioning hard. I think he was still a little on the flat side, especially yeah. on top. 
and you can see it in his like side shots and his front shots and some of this you can see there wasn't quite the pop that i think he could have had uh i don't know i don't know midsection and his chest when he puts his arms down there's a little bit of like flatness to it um but his conditioning was excellent and his posing on some of the shots yes definitely did hurt him i don't know why and maybe he just can't i don't know if he can or can't but i don't know why he's not pulling a vacuum or something else during that lat spread because this looks incredible. Like this front lat spread. A vacuum in the front lat. Does anyone do that? Like that's weird. No. I think I've seen it before somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have actually. See, but like, look there. Like, look at that. His chest and his arms and his delts. That's yeah. a little there. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. needs he needs a little more here. Yeah. yeah. There's not quite pop there, and I think he just needs a bit more muscle as well. And you can see it on the side chest as well. Like even just standing there, how his rear delt and arm and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, he's still quite his whole flat. shoulder. Yeah, there's still he needs more there, but like shots where the conditioning is really shown, like this, like look at his hamstrings, man. Yeah, jeez. Like he needs obviously more in the back for the back double, but his back but, is fantastic. You know what? He needs more in the back double, but the way he's posing is making it look like yeah. he needs more than he actually yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, he's making himself look small. His, like, his, his, lower, his lower body is fucking gnarly as shit. Though. Crazy. crazy. But like yeah. when I look at this, I'm like, why are you pinching your shoulders together? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's pushed that way, way yeah. right. Up. And he's just squatting down to it. Actually, you saw that when he comes out of the pose, his back actually opened up. This back lat honestly looks really good, though. Like this, that's, a good, that's a great pose for him. Yeah, yeah. That's, really that's going to get crazy over the years. That pose. Yeah. I think part of the reason he took third. Now that I watch this over again, is also balance. Like his legs are just yeah, yeah for sure yeah. monstrous. Well, I don't like to the waste squats. They're not they're not, they're not overly accentuated from the front. Like they don't look too bad from the front, but especially from the back, they look so big compared to the rest of his body. Yeah, we didn't get to see all the shots there. He just he didn't do everything. So let's go through these. So this is the front lat spread is just so this isn't he's starting off pretty good here. I'm like, okay. Yeah, but that's still quite a clear win for rap on that shot. Right. I, I, well, I don't know if it's a, a clear win. I mean I think it's still pretty clear. Oh, look, I think he looked awesome in this shot, but I what think part what part of this is better for Rafa other than his chest? Well, look at the lat difference. His man. lats, his lats, okay, his lats. But then his leg, but then and his, then his body, his arm, he still has arms. awesome arms, like the flow of the waist, like everything. It just yeah. is a nicer shot to me. I think I do think Vito has bigger quads um, and Rafa's don't look as good as I've seen them at this show, especially how he's posing them a little more straight up in this front double. Uh, but his front double and front ladder, very strong shots for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to give Rafa this one too. Okay. Let's move on. And then you go to front lat and then this is this obviously is... Vito's weakest shot. Yeah, this is where he loses me here. We're like, okay. But he not... sticks his stomach out eh, when he does that post. Well, I, I yeah, he, It's kind of like a Nick Walker-esque. I was thinking the exact same thing. I think yeah. he's having the same issue as Nick is by pulling oh. it out. He, he's got his sh shoulders a little low, and it's kind of like it looks a little funky how he's doing it. This is obviously a rapper shot all day. but yeah. Well, of course, yeah, but it's also, again, it's yeah, posing. It's like he's posing yeah, for sure. He pulls that around. He's yeah. way wider up top. I still yeah, a little, think. A little I more still... arms like triceps would help him on this too, but. I still think Rafa would win this shot if he was posing properly, but he's just not doing himself a service by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I let's... Think for a guy with such good hamstrings, he can be getting a lot more of them on that back uh, side shot, you know? Yeah. I just don't like the way this, he squats this is down not so a low. Huge, like Rafa's back is better, but as a whole, this pose isn't like a blowout for him. I actually give this pose to Vito. Yeah. Vito stood up more upright. We, yeah. He's that really, pose looked much really better. Punch down, but calves, hamstrings, glutes, the conditioning through the back and yeah. you know he's got a little more pop to the back but overall i would agree the with other you thing, the other thing about um vito shot is i don't know why like i know his quads are his like lateralis is huge but i also feel like he's turning his knees out more than he needs yeah. to mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's actually mm -hmm. hurting his balance like if he brought his feet together and didn't turn him out so much and, and might... not squat down so low yeah right. yeah yeah like look at the the bend in his knee. You know? Yeah, the yeah. difference the difference between how they're standing is evident. Like, yeah, you lose all your detail. Like. And I don't even like how Rafa stands on his back double, to be honest. And that's even compared to that, you know. Even so then, here, like you know, he's not showing any hamstring separation at all with the way he's standing like that. His side try wasn't terrible. I didn't mind this shot for him. He's a wide guy. Mm. I, I, he, not, he reminds me. I was actually pretty good too, so I'm not I'm not too buttered about that. I actually like that shot for him. His physique reminds me a little bit of Derek Lunsford in his early days. I can uh, see that a little bit, kind of like big, you know. Uh, it's well, not. It's the reverse, guys. It's like the reverse. It's yeah, it's the reverse of big Derek quads, Lunsford. wide back. No, well, no, Derek had small quads, but a really oh, well, back, but that's huge. Small. The same. It's the kind of condition. I think he means like the width across these clavicles and that, that front double is kind of similar. Kind of like a little bit of lack of pop through well, the chest. Well, because Derek still has smaller legs than his upper body, so it's yeah. definitely the reverse. It's um, reverse. It's exactly like a reverse, yeah. Derek's inner thighs are, you know, crazy, and I think that with 
even though you know Vito's got great sweep too, but he does got huge inner thighs too. Yeah, I just I don't know. Um, I just see some some similarities. Then from the back, from the back, like see when he's posing, he's losing all of that density through the middle for the adductor. It's like if he didn't close that off, he'd actually have a thicker leg through the middle rather than have that. Like Fred said, he's trying to create so much width and sweep, but he doesn't need to because he has such well-developed quads that they're there anyway. He was yeah, very... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Ian. He was very exciting to watch, too. If you watch him during the call-outs, he was, like, fucking hyped up. Like, he was yeah. having a good time, this dude. Like, he was very exciting bodybuilder to watch, which I enjoyed. This is wild. Look at the gap in the middle. If he pushes, oh. like, if he didn't have his feet turned out as much, he just put that space in the middle, and I think they'd look even better. You know, this I, is... Sorry, go ahead. I don't even know if it's his fault, though, Ben. I think it's just lateralis has that sweep on it. Because look at his toe. His toe is going straight. And it's still, like, bowed yeah, out. Like yeah, that. hang on. Yeah, but, you know, it doesn't matter where your foot is. It's where your knee is rotating out. Yeah, right? but his if knee... He's rotating, if, if he's driving that femur that way... He is driving the, the knee stay, a little bit, yeah. The foot yeah. can stay where it is. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think if he stood up a bit... I don't. I don't know. I think it's just that way from the back. It doesn't look like his stance. How he's standing right now is not terrible, but that's not how he's hitting it. Every time. He, he'll change as he gets into it. And he squats down lower. I don't know, guys. He's I, there, right look. there. He squats yeah, there, down. There, there. He moved down. Yeah. 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 yeah he, squ he squats he down. His, his knee came out even it. more. Yeah. Yeah. When he yeah. squats down, his knees bow outwards. I also think for a guy with like this good of glutes, he should probably have a little less coverage on those trunks. I feel like they're like a little. Yeah. yeah. You want to see more yeah. ass. Especially, yeah. especially at the top. <laughs> and, and where's the yeah. contrast? The, the velvet trunks are just, just a fog. Not, just a fog. The velvet trunks are not rocking it. Change yeah, no. yeah, those are my time. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not good. There's not they're not enough like sheen against the tan, so it doesn't look good. So yeah. this is why I think I picked Tonio overall because I feel like when we talk about the least amount of weaknesses, we just looked at two guys in Rafa and uh, Vito. That I can I could pick out clear weaknesses where I can't with Tonio. Sorry to interrupt, but you can see what I mean here with the trunks. Like, look at the size of his trunk compared to the other two guys. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Ian, Ian's, Ian's hooked on the trunks. Like, I want to see more ass. He's covering, he's, covering three, he's covering three quarters of his ass. I hate when guys do that. It looks I like think he's just, I think, but, or like you're like got diaper butt or something. It's fucking awful. Don't. But do I think, but I think he's also got narrow glutes. Like, look compared to Tonio. It's yeah, like he's get, get smaller trunks that fit your glutes properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tonio's got those like brawny glutes where they attach halfway down these fucking legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But do you guys know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you're trying to point out weaknesses, it, it, that's the really tough part. Because I agree with you guys. Rafa won more shots. Yeah. But Tonio has the least amount of weaknesses. I think yeah. Tonio is the most complete. However, I don't think Tonio displays his physique the way as best as he can still. Oh, one I think shot. that played into it. One, one and, shot. Ab and thigh, too, though. Abin Thai, who I don't like well, his Abin Thai, and I don't really? like his most muscular either. Yeah, he pulls himself off. Yeah. Most Wait, let me go back. Let me go back. I think his front shots, his straight on shots, his front shots and his back shots, he does very well. Anything else is is. Hey, a little... wait a minute, wait a minute. How how would you guys do, Paul? You go first. How would I would you... stand up. I would stand up taller like Rafa is. Yeah. Like when, by he's putting his head forward like that, he's making his upper body just mm. he's losing some upper body taper. He's, making, he's, he's crunching it too much, guys. I'm looking. Would... At, I'm looking at them, thinking they're standing the same way. It's just he's short. No, but I, I'll, I'll, if you click play, see if he adjusts it even more in this. No, I don't know. I find he. I agree with Paul. Something about it, even not compared to the others, just how he's hitting it. I feel like if he was to blow that out and then stand up a little more upright, it would definitely be a little better for him. But I also yeah. don't think that's like his weakest shot. I think no, it's no. he could improve. Yeah, uh, but I don't look at it and be like, "Hey, this is terrible," you know. And his I, most muscular, which is right there. Yeah. Um, I think it was the next one, Fuad, I think. Sorry. No. Where? Next one where? <clears throat> I think I thought it was uh <clears throat> sorry. There is the most muscular in here, isn't there or no? Yeah, where he's doing a he's doing a hand Look, together there, most there's, muscular. There's Ab and yeah. they're they're standing the exact same way. Yeah. I, I agree they are staying the same way here, but I also think right. Rafa could stand more upright in this as well. In that shot there, they're like in that still photo right there, they're standing closer to the same. But as the pose goes on, Rafa's more upright and Tornio's more down like more bent forward, and I think it loses some taper form there. Mm. Well, anyway, it was very close. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Tonio. I think Tonio. Score cards. What was the score? Yeah, I was gonna. Anyone I see the know. score? I don't know. From what I read, Rafa was in the middle the whole time. No, nope, that's not nope? true. Okay. No, they did. Tonio did a full round in the middle and ended with Tonio in the middle. Oh, okay. Or it wasn't judge? a full round. They did like front double, side chest, back double, most muscular with him in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So does this mean? So can I'm gonna be a, an ass for a minute. Does this mean uh, we have a failure in bodybuilding criteria judging? In what sense? Well, if you have a guy that wins four out of seven poses or five out of seven poses, 
but you have another guy that has less weaknesses and looks more complete. And then the guy that looks less complete wins. Is that a failure of our system? I don't believe so. To be overly deep about it. No, I believe like, so. I, I, like I said before, I, it's like not all humans are created equally. So you could be, you know, not as complete, but still be better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's yeah, true. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay. Before we leave, we'll talk about Detroit this weekend. Do you want to talk about? Yes, I do. I will we'll finish with that. Let's just talk about Detroit. So right now for Detroit, we have Vito, which I'm really looking forward to seeing in person. Mm-hmm. I hope he adjust some of those poses before Detroit because I think it can make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Martin, who is looking awesome, who took last year off, I believe, correct? Uh, I think he did he do one early in the year and then take the rest of the year off? I don't oh, think so. No, last show, I believe, was the UK show. Yeah. So did the I, UK Arnold before it switched. Yeah, so I think everybody's looking forward to seeing him. Um, and then we have Justin Rodriguez, who's working with J- Justin Jacoby now and seems to be looking pretty phenomenal. So I think Justin, if Justin can get his waist right, Sorry, if Justin Jacoby can get Justin Rodriguez's waist right, Justin could win the show. Mm-hmm. I do think he's big enough to win the show. Um, anyway, then we have some potential people that are jumping in. I don't know what Ben knows. Ben, do you are you allowed to say anything? Or are we going to say they're all maybes? Working on it. Okay, so we have <laughs> some, we have some maybes that could make the show pretty phenomenal. Rafa, I think Rafa would be the favorite if he jumped in. Rafa could easily take home twenty five thousand dollars. This is the craziest thing. This is the craziest thing to me. Tonio, if Tonio showed up though, I mean, it could be it it'd could be a great battle. It well, it'd be another it'd be another great battle between them. Yeah. The thing is, you know, the crazy thing to me is bodybuilders have been asking for more money, better theater, better lighting. We're doing all that. We got an amazing theater. We got twenty five grand for the winner, ten grand for the second, five grand for third. Um, and then we're doing, uh, better lighting, better, everything, black backdrop. So, you know, you guys got to show up like me, Ben and Paul put our time in and put our money in for next. and, uh, you know, people need to fucking show up to these things or else it's like, why would I do it next year if nobody wants to show up? So and if, and if you look at the schedule for it, there's really not that many shows after us. So well, I don't know like what I, guys are doing. I think, it, well, there is, there's New York, California, then there's Toronto, then there's Vancouver. That's Tampa, 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 Tampa so Texas. In the total year, there's only like 14 shows. So it's like, yeah. yeah. Well, but then you have to win now to get to win. And you have to win one now. So well, I'm just surprised more guys aren't jumping in these early shows. Well, to me, it's the $25,000. Like, yeah, too. You know, I mean, this isn't uh, this isn't peanuts anymore. Like, that's a lot of fucking money to walk away with I'm, for I'm one day. I'm coming out of retirement just for this new prize money. <laughs> but, it, but it's also the timing of it, right? If you qualify yeah. next weekend, shut it down. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. You have perfect break. time. If you have to go through Toronto, like, do that like New York, Cali, Toronto, then Tampa, Texas, then you push and you, and that you year, like, you, Look, I know people obviously always you should always believe in yourself, but you also need to be realistic. Like, no offense to any of these guys, ninety nine percent of them aren't going to beat Nick Walker in New York, right? No, you right. know, like in the, you still have you know a lot of guys like Hunter, right? And, you know, Andrew, Andrew like, yeah, these guys that need to qualify. You Michael know? Crizzo, yeah. like you Michael guys, Crizzo, get I mean, yeah. so like you're talking about like outside basically the entire top 10 still has to requalify other yeah. than like two or three of them you know yeah yeah and well, like, the thing because i got i thought this was and no offense i love you john i love patrick but i thought this was a mistake to miss this show because i agree john, john came off the arnold looking phenomenal and i think and i know akeem wasn't going to be here which i think is a big mistake on akeem's part too because i think akeem would have would have been the favorite had he yeah. jumped into the show so it's like, like he had previous plans right yeah but he had previous plans so you know whatever but i i just think you know, when these schedules come out, you got to go. Okay, what show can I fucking win to get to the Olympia? Right, and, and, and if you're and like, if you're yeah. a key, if you're a Keem or a John or these guys, and no offense, you probably know you're not going to beat Hottie. Right. So it's like, what show can I do? I'm already in shape. What show can I do? Oh fuck, Detroit's right there. Right. Yeah. Hottie's not going to go to Detroit. Samson's not going to go to Detroit. They're already qualified for Olympia. Right. Maybe maybe I can win that one. So it's like, right. and you like know? you said, for this is a job. Like twenty five grand, nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. You know, what I mean, yeah. for one day's work. Yeah. Can I touch on something too? I don't know if you guys saw that uh, big Rammy's guest posing in Pittsburgh. I saw oh, that. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to that real quick. So I just want to say some of the maybes. Detroit, we have uh, James is a maybe. Rafa is a maybe. Tonio is a maybe. And we don't know if any of them are going to show up, but we hope they do. And if all three show up, then we have a fucking awesome top six. And the way James is looking, 
right he looks now. Like he's getting ready right now. I'm like that motherfucker's more shredded than I've ever seen. <laughs> I know. So I'm like, he better not. He better be fucking with me. I hope he's gonna show up. I don't know why he's keeping he's a secret. He's, but, yeah. he's been like pushing the conditioning down hard. But yeah. you know what's crazy about the way he looks? That's the way I used to look when, when Chad would load me like with tons and tons of food. That's how I looked before he loaded me, and you could barely ever spill over. Like you're so de- you're so depleted yeah. that it's like you just fill the fuck out, and like it's a perfect look. So I feel like whoever's working with James, if anybody's working with James, that's their plan. And I'm like, it's gonna look fucking wild. And Ben's yeah. got a smile. Ben, are you working with James? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Okay. I- <laughs> I, I probably know more. I know more I know, than I should, but I know you know, know more, more than should. everybody else. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> but I'm. I am not working with James. No. I'm... Anyway, so that's Detroit, and then and then on the other side of it, for the fans, we have an awesome meet and greet. Um, Samson's gonna show up. Sam's gonna show up. Ian, Mike, Hunter, Seth, Mike Isratel, me, Ben, Paul, we're all gonna be there. Oh, Ashley, Ashley Lakomowski, uh, we're all gonna be there. Fucking sign in autographs or whatever taking photos is going to be fun so anyway that being said then we have the pittsburgh pro we get to see rami after a year off over it'll be a year is rami half. gonna be is rami gonna blow the fucking doors off this thing or is he gonna be a disappointment if the, if you're rami you gotta be showing up at this guest posing like you're two weeks out yeah oh, you think so i got i got <laughs> out to... on this one wait he's, he's doing ramadan though as well right yeah, well, he's skipping that shit this year. You got to be, bro. <laughs> no, no, he's doing Ramadan. He said, know. yeah, Ian said he's got to forego his religion so he can look at it. <laughs> no, I. <clears throat> he doesn't show up at this show, like at this guest posing, looking like way better than almost everybody else up on that stage. He, he's really going to kill his fucking his buzz for this. I don't agree. Like, I don't, ah, I don't agree. With, I don't agree with you. How do you not agree? Because. If even if everybody shit, well, number one, I don't agree because it's a podcast and I always don't agree. Yeah. But number two, <laughs> um, no, if he doesn't look better than everybody, it doesn't matter. It just takes all the pressure off him for the Olympia. Like it doesn't matter. Nobody gives a fuck. If you look, if you won the Pittsburgh Pro, you know, it's funny. I talked to somebody who was backstage and they were like, man, these guys no. were at, these guys were acting like it was a fucking show. Yeah. Really? They're like, like diuretic, no. they're like diuretics in and they're fucking getting ready. And I'm like, guys. I know you want to build your hype, but nobody gives a fuck. Come, sh- come showtime. No, no, I don't know. The ju- the judges like really p- it put Derek on notice a lot for that Olympia when he showed up there. No, because if you remember last year's Pittsburgh, Hunter was the standout of that of that group. Last yeah, year after really last weird. year after the Pittsburgh pro guest posing, everybody talking about how, how good Hunter looked. Yeah. We didn't use it that right. But but I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. There is some time because we've done guest poses, right? With Hunter, and that was I worked with him for that. And then we've got this one coming up. There is a tactic that we go into it because it's not about the judges; it's about the fans and these guys' careers and generating yeah. a fan base and earning money. And like, yeah, but... it's so much more now. You remember twenty years ago, it only matters what. Like, uh, no, I, you know, I honestly it's, think it's okay, very, wait, wait, wait. It's yeah. very important for Rami to look good. But I, but wait a minute, I want to touch on that for a sec because that's I think what people are talking about. That's what I think Ian was talking about, Ben. But my point to it is. Rami has all the money. His supplement really? company, yes, his supplement company is absolutely crushing oh. it. Like they sold millions in like the first couple months. He's like, mainstream famous in, in and he's music, extremely right? famous. So Rami doesn't have to fucking get any more fans. He doesn't have to get any more money. This doesn't mean to him what it means to everybody else. Yes, yeah. you know? I don't know, but I think I think but... Rami is someone that like you know, the, the, the pressures and, you know, the, like the bodybuilding community and the online, I think it does is something that he hears and that does wear on him. And I think if you're, if you go there and everyone shits on you saying like, you look like a bag of crap, it's going to weigh heavy on him. So I think he's going to be showing up here trying to look very good. He's not going to just go in there. Ah, this is how I look. No, no, I agree. I agree. But you and I both know when you go into a big show with less expectations, you can, you can train freely. Yeah. So it's almost like if Rami shows up subpar, Sure, he'll take some heat for a month, but then when he gets ready for the Olympia, people are going to have him in sixth, and he can show up and fucking yeah, over deliver. I also see like the last time he got on stage, Steve Weinberger himself said Rami needs to not compete for a while and take some time off. If he shows up at the guest posing, and then someone asks Steve Weinberger after the fact, "What do you think of Rami?" He said, "I don't think he should compete at the Olympia." That's not looking too well. Hard look, right. I'm not going to disagree. He, he's not. He's not trying to hustle anyone at this bit. Let me put it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I, do you look, think I, Rami? Do you think Rami would show up though if he's not gonna if he's not gonna be improved and better? 
that that's what I mean. He's only I getting get on stage with with a full intention to fucking. I, yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. I'm in no way I'm in no way disagreeing that if you can look the best out of the best guys, that it's going to be advantageous to your career. All I'm saying is, if there's one guy on that stage that has enough money and fame to not give a fuck, it's Rami. Right. I, so that that's why I think he's going because he knows he's better and he knows he's going to have give, I think Otherwise, he, he wouldn't bother. Yeah. He yeah. gives a fuck. It's, it makes it interesting going yeah. into it, yeah. though, you know, to see what he's going to show. All right, so him let's because he hasn't teased anything. I don't think. Okay, let's uh, let's predict who's going to look best at a guest posing. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> do show well, placings for a guest posing. All right, yeah, we should do play pace. Like, hey, wait, we'll, have well, Nick, well, hang on, hang on. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah, it's Nick is a week out. Yeah, Nick's I was be literally about out, to yeah. say that yeah, Nick yeah, is going to yeah. be doing Bjork curling right then. He's going to kill everybody. Okay, Hunter's going to make turn some heads too. Yeah, Hunter looks g- good, but Nick is going to be in show condition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's leave Nick out because he's the only one in shape. Yeah, we'll pick between the <laughs> off-season guys. So who? Oh, yeah, I think that's fucking cool. He's doing that. Yeah, yeah. like getting on stage a week out. Most of these I don't think. I don't think. I don't think you have a choice when the minions call you. Yeah, you don't really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna honestly, you do, but it's not a good. It's not listen, a good Ben. Night. If if anybody, if any other show called Nick to guest pose, you know he would say no. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, wait. It depends. Like if they're offering him, but like, it's also, yeah. but it's also in New York, and Nick is notorious for not wanting to travel, so it's right there. Because yeah, he's like, he's home in New York now. Look, so. I'm not I'm not taking anyway. It is cool that he's going, but at the same time, we have to, you know, <laughs> call, has yeah. permanently call it what it is. Yeah, yeah right. What's has that? He permanently moved back to New York? Is he just there for the prep? New Jersey, you mean? What is his prep? I think he's just there his parents for the prep. Okay. Um. Okay. So. I think Hunter holds the best off-season shape and condition. Based on what I've seen last time I saw Hunter, I'd say so too. Because yeah. Samson loses some of his wow when his waist isn't in, uh, in check and everything. So it's like Samson's, I'm going to say, going to look impressive. Derek is obviously always very impressive. Derek is going to win. Yeah. Yeah, I he think Derek's Mr. Going. Olympia, and he is also very impressive in the off-season, so it's hard not to pick He's going to be the leanest off-season bodybuilder that is the biggest in round. I don't think he's going to be leaner than Hunter, but I think... I do. Bet. Bet. I bet your hair. You have to shave it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait. I will... Uh, I'm going to start putting Hunter on Clen and some T3. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, we got a few weeks. I can put him in. Yeah, crank it. Who's, think... the, who, who's the lineup of guys that is going to be there? Samson, Andrew, Samson, Derek. Derek. Samson, Derek. Yeah, fucking Andrew. Andrew. We've not Hunter. seen Andrew really do a big no. guest pose, right? I've mean, yeah. seen Andrew do it. That's cool. Because he was big in the UK. When we saw him in the UK, yeah, and he, yeah, I know big. he was covered up and he's a big guy. But he's big fucking up. massive. Yeah. <laughs> big. Which he needed to be, right? He's got to take that time. Yeah, I'm I glad he didn't do the Arnold's. But I don't know how much bigger he looked than normal because I've seen him two other times before and I thought he was the same size. Just He's just a massive guy. Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, so I'm saying, you're in a big hoodie, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Knows, I saw but... I saw him in a tank top one day, like in a in a sleeveless, and he looks big for sure. But yeah, it's like what I said. He, he's so big all the he's time. He's always big. Yeah, I'm so impressed by him every time I see him. It's hard to just yeah. decipher between one and the other. I'm just I'm just glad he didn't do the two Arnolds and then have to go and keep. I agree with that. Him. I don't yeah. think there was any okay. benefit to him doing. He needed a break. Okay, let's wrap this up, uh, and then we'll get into one last thing. But who do you think? Yeah, Paul, you go first. Who do you think is going to look best at the guest posing? Just the number well, one guy. Oh, yeah, we're taking Nick out, Other right? than Nick. Other than Nick. Other than Nick. Okay. I'm going to say Hunter. Okay. Ian? I'm going to go Derek, Hunter, Andrew. <laughs> He's placing <laughs> Samson. Just give me the one guy. Give me the top guy. Derek, yeah. Hunter, Andrew, Samson, Rami. <laughs> I'm going to go Rami, Derek. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead, Ben. You know my horse. I got a horse in that race. Yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah, pick well, your I'm going to go, I'm going to go Derek. I'm going to shockingly go Derek or Rami. I, I hope Rami. Fucking I hope You're such a Rami fanboy, aren't you? Can't I'm a huge <laughs> Rami. Um, listen, you on the post, C-Bum's on the poster for this show every year as a guest appearance. Motherfucker, get on stage, Chris. Get up there. <laughs> but He, think he, about look how, good. he looks think, good in the offseason. Just get up yeah. there. Look, think about how, think he about looks how, awesome up compared to these guys. No, he would get dwarfed. Come on. He would get dwarfed, but he's he's bigger and he's very pretty even in the offseason. Is honestly, he big? I thought he downsizes in the offseason because he like – Takes no, but I think he started into like his kind of bulk back up right now. So I think he'd probably be 265 in like good shape. I think he would look good, man. I think it would be he, a good. It'd be, I'd love to see he that. Take, he takes, uh, 
he takes a legit like three four months off off right like no you know, training from, like from last year's olympia until basically like a month ago he was like just chilling basically yeah really he was walking in the gym right well he was training but like you know training okay. eating a couple meals a day like doing it but not being serious he's definitely not taking really any drugs or anything um you know he's just kind of chilling i think he just started back into his you know get some muscle back on because the olympia is approaching you know all right let's get an odd mindset to me sorry just that's such an odd i get, I get off stage but okay more muscle more and more everything yeah. just yeah but go. he can't right like he's limited no, no, right? yeah. he's at his cap and he's not he's never going to lose because he's out muscled by anyone in that class right, yeah. yeah like right. no none of those guys are as big as he is so all right let's move on to the final thing which is the big news in the in the sport uh this weekend was the michael de got Jumped and beat up by four guys at the two, bro, two Bros Pros event. Uh, I guess he had two broken ribs and his eye looked all fucked up. I'll show the photos, actually. Partially but... broken nose, his eyes all fucked up. Yeah, he got – they did a number on him. It's pretty unfortunate. So, I've seen oh, a lot I just of... got a message. I just got a message on this. I literally just got a message on this whole thing. And? To someone that wants to do an interview with you about it. Okay. I'm not sure she didn't name it. Sorry. It's okay. We'll talk, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it after. I don't know if I really want to get into it. I just like I commented on this only because I like Michael and I think he's a nice guy. So I don't want to. I don't want to get like dragged into it and be interviewing a bunch of people. But maybe I don't know. Who knows? Um, look. So what Michael's uh, Michael's statement basically said that he was trying to get backstage to talk to his wife because she was competing, and. He said he asked one guard and they let him through and then some other people told him to leave. And I guess there's video uh, of the entire incident. Oh, yeah. And a, and a lot of there people. Is? Saw, yeah. There's CCTV of it. Yeah. There's CCTV video of it. And apparently a lot of people saw it and say that Michael's version is true. But then the Two Bros Pros event kind of put out a statement and he tried to the, paint it very differently yeah. yeah they said he was like trying to go in the girls area and all this like they made him sound like a sexual predator and like yeah. it yeah. wasn't really a good look wait, wait can i just say this yeah this is the same promoter federal like yeah promoter that back in 2020 and they had covid had the female tan intense wide open in the middle of a fucking field for everyone to see so yeah I'm, so mm-hmm. i'm just gonna i just want to make one quick statement about it um we don't know what's true and what's not because I didn't see the video and I wasn't there. So I'm just going to make my own statement about it as somebody in the middle. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just put it this way. Let's pretend everything the two bros pros people said was true. You cannot break ribs, break nose, and fucking beat the shit out of somebody because they're bad. I bounced for a really long time. I worked security for a long time. You guys all have, I'm sure. A lot of people watching this, people in the bodybuilding community have all been bouncers. They know what it's like. Mm. There are bouncers that get a hold of somebody and they have their fucking fun. Mm. And then there are bouncers that get a hold of somebody and know how to like wrap them up a little bit, carry them out. Do yeah, their I'm, job. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. if if Michael was completely had lost it, which I can very hard to believe that that's what happened. But if he did, if you have four guys, you can easily wrap somebody up and carry them out without beating the shit out of them. Yeah. So there isn't really an argument to it be made. It also is not looking very good for these two bros pros guys in some sentiment too, in that if you watch Michael's stories from earlier in the day, he had been commenting on how poorly the show was run. You right, know? Yeah, right. He had been saying that the venue was kind of embarrassing and that they you know, were charging astronomical amounts of money for a show where there was four right. competitors in it, like that was more expensive than the Arnold. Yeah. And maybe he pissed somebody off there a little bit. And look, yeah, I'm yeah. sure... He tried to get backstage a couple of times. They probably told him no. Okay. And then when they saw him back there after some, the show was done, apparently at this point, when they let him back the final time, the show was over. And someone said, yeah, you can go back. The show's done now. And then I guess these guys that had initially told him not to go back there, saw him back there. And then what it sounds like is that they fucking jumped him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's one thing to take someone out of a building because he's not allowed there, or you think he's not allowed. I mean, there, Paul, you work at customs. Took a you, Paul, you work at customs. You go through security training and all this. Like, you understand. Yeah, there's excessive force. You know, there's yeah. necessary force and excessive force. And a guy, like, judging by the shape that Michael looks at, he's in today, looks like excessive force was used, obviously, in four yeah, on yeah. one. Don't and, I'm sure you're... And, and I think one of the guys that was working security, like, knew how to fucking fight and he really? you know, went aggressive as shit on him, you know? Well, you know, that's, you got to be careful. Tonight, I, mean... I, uh, I, ahead, coach a, I coach a good few athletes in England and Europe. I don't, 
a large majority of them will refuse to do two pro shows, and that was before this happened. Really? Yeah, I don't know anything yeah. about I don't know anything about those know. guys, so I don't want to yeah. talk about them. I just I've heard a lot of people complain, so yeah. I don't want to say they don't they don't know what they're doing or they're bad promoters. I don't know anything. Like I said, I don't know anything about them, but I have heard complaints about how they do things. Well, um, but regardless it, of all that, regardless of the show, regardless of how bad the show was, well, the regardless, like, regardless, even if, even if, even if Michael DeBull was sitting there going, "This show is fucking sucks," these promo voters don't know what they're doing. No, I do that. You can't, you can't beat the fuck out of him. You just can't. No, and, it, and look, and if say you did, say you had told him to not be backstage, and then you see him backstage, like say he somehow snuck back there, and you see him, you don't just beat the shit out of him. You'd be like, "Hey, motherfucker, right. told you, get the fuck out." You know, and then he's like, hey, right. the other guy told me I could go back in. And you're like, no, 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 I don't care what he told you. That's not the rules. You got to leave. You know, it doesn't need to result in you fucking smacking him around. That's ridiculous. Right. And I, I, it'd be hard to believe that Michael was throwing punches to as the instigator against four guys. No, do I, do I, even if he was, their the job is himself. to restrain Just him from right, him. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, security's job is not to escalate. It's to de-escalate and remove yes. it. And I'm not trying to say like, you know, stuff doesn't happen. Maybe you have to fight back. But if there's four guys, I just don't see it, man. I've carried guys out with four guys, and it's very easy to like, you know, wrap, get wrap horizontal, wrap, yeah, get them horizontal, wrap the yeah. legs, wrap the neck, carry them out. Yeah. Like it's not, it's been Plus, done I mean, before. You know, like we put on shows, we you know, like the people you get to help you, you got to make sure that they're all you know level headed people who aren't going to cause you trouble because as a promoter, you're probably the one that's going to you know well, look I at a loss of possible loss. Some people something. saying as well is that. Uh, some of these guys were like bruisers and not like actual yeah. security guys, you know, like really? they were, yeah. that's why I think they ran when the police were called in this circumstance, you know? Well, that oh, was the really? other thing. If you guys, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't want to talk too much about the detail because I didn't like investigate the whole thing, but no, I exactly. heard, I heard two security guards got arrested and two ran and two took off. Yeah. Oh. Well, if you did your job right, you wouldn't have run. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like if I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, I wouldn't have ran. Right. No. So that's a problem in itself, right? And where are you going to run to? You're going to get caught. Like, yeah, I mean, if they got two of your butt, if you were working there, they have a list right. of security guards. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going to run to? It's like they have a list of who was working there. Right. Unless they don't. Unless they don't. Unless well, no, because maybe. the two. Knows, maybe. Maybe. No, because the two bros pros event that they put out, the statement that they put out says those guys were SA, SIA certified, blah, blah, blah. So oh, yeah. they must have had a list of who was working security. Yeah. So it's not like these guys can get away. It's like, yeah. So I don't know, man. It's uh, it's unfortunate. But let's last question. On both, so just so we're fair to both sides. If the two bros pros event is telling the truth, and Michael DeBulls did all the things that they said he did, what punishment would he deserve? Is it a one year suspension? Is it like, well, he's that's not, not not allowed to go to the shows anymore? Like, what is the punishment? Well, if you're two bro sports, like that, that's how you would handle it. You would, you know, kick no, him no, out no. Of I'm asking whatever. if I'm asking is the IFBB have a, a place to no to say anything here? I I think they do. I disagree. I, think I disagree they do. with it's, you. It's a sanction, it's a sanction event. Yeah, it's an IFBB sanctioned event. I think that they do have. Well, a say and Michael DeBull is an IFBB athlete. So yeah, it's like right. you have to write. You're representing the the entire yeah. federation. Yeah. So, so saying that he did what? That he went backstage? Like what? I'm not saying he did. I'm saying right. I'm saying I want to I want to play both sides of the fence here. Let's assume that the two bros pros people are telling all the truth. What would the punishment be for them? And let's assume Michael DeBull. The punishment he's got his broken ribs, can't compete. Like, what, what, how much further are you going to run with that? He, got, like, he took he took a beating. Like, is that not the punishment? I don't think that's the punishment. I, well, it is because even if, like you said, even if he was, say he threw the first punch, the job is to not beat the shit out of him. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not, listen, I'm not agreeing with what happened. We can play the other side of the fence. Let's say the two bros pros people are completely at fault. Does that mean the IFBB says, hey, you can't hold shows anymore? Yeah. It'll say, like, is, that the, is that the punishment? I don't, I well, it depends. It, 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 well, no, it depends because it's, then, are you, like you said, are you blaming it on, Two bros, or are you blaming it on the security on those, that, on they security didn't buy, that, that they didn't that they didn't import, right? That's I think all they're responsible for their staff. I believe you partially <sighs> yeah, are, Paul. Like, I, don't, I don't know the logistics of how you operate in this space. To be honest, I don't. So, really Paul, know. we run a show, and uh, we know who's working at our show. We know who our volunteers are. So, say I'm bouncing at your show, and I fucking beat the shit out of someone. And like it's an actual well, criminal welcome, charge. Welcome late. to Detroit. Is that, yeah. is that? Is that? Yeah, but one Should've second. Should have fucked Paul, is that our, <laughs> is that our fault or is that Ian's fault? I believe you're responsible for your stuff. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Go to the go to the buys and tries post of this. 
I'll show you something hilarious. Someone sent me this this morning. I didn't even see it. What? Uh, oh, I think I saw what you're talking about. Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one sec, I'll find it. It's Where like, is it? It's right here somewhere. Is it this? It's in this one? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. I saw it this yeah, morning. Right there, was... right there. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if they did that to someone like Ian Bollier. Those four security guards and two bros would have been six feet below the ground by now. Still alive, <laughs> but hiding. <laughs> and then... uh this guy goes uh it gets better oh where the fuck oh wait v12 yeah. replies there we go it gets better he goes was he no, he's like, what's the difference with ian and michael side for their masks he's yeah like, ian has killed people for with his bare hands <laughs> and is this like, one of your buddies <laughs> was he in the army or is he just a serial killer on the run he is a one-man killing army and he is not on the run <laughs> look at these guys this is hilarious that's great you, you got some awesome fans yeah uh, this guy doesn't even follow me. I clicked this. Really? Post, he doesn't even follow me. This guy Vivek is like your number one fan. But he <laughs> click his following. He literally doesn't even follow me. Wow. I'm not gonna. But he can't. But secret of I checked him. I said I was like, is this guy a fan? And I clicked him. He literally isn't even following me. Holy oh. shit. Yeah. See, tell this guy to guest pose. What's he? What's he doing? Why aren't you guest posing? <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Look at this fucking guy. Wow. Jesus. Good that for that. Whip. I know, right? He's got the fucking what is that? A GTO? <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a Camaro, I think. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Fuck, that's nice. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Good for him, man. Well, okay, boys. Ian, I know you gotta go. We only yeah. have to do we only do a quick one, anyways. Okay. Um, I'll get this up today or tomorrow. Good talking to you guys. We'll get another podcast in this week before. And we'll see all you guys Show. this week. Yeah, we'll see you guys this weekend. Yeah. Yes, sir. See you Friday. Yeah. Okay, You're coming boys. Thursday, bud? Yeah. Yeah, we have Thursday night. Hey, I, land, just... I land at 8.30 in the morning on Friday, so you be, better be there ready to pick me up. Uh, Windsor Airport or where? Detroit? Windsor Airport. <laughs> oh, cool. It's right around the corner from our house. Yeah. Um, I'll, just, I'll just take an Uber then. That's fine. No, no. I'll come get you. The only thing is, look, we're probably going to have to book like three or four hotel rooms because my house isn't that big. Ah, I got yeah, an extra room. What do you, you guys can stay with me if you want? Got a spare bedroom. How many bedrooms you should go in the yacht? Ian, I bought you a cot. I bought I bought two cots. What? I'm sleeping in the same bedroom I was sleeping. What are you talking about? <laughs> First one at the top of the stairs. That's my room. No, that's because he because Ben's bring, room. No, because Ben's bringing his wife, so they get. Oh the well, then Ben gets the room. Fuck. Yeah, that that's the wife room. Yeah, you can stay at my house if you want, Ian. I got an extra bedroom and uh, you get yeah. your own bathroom. Paul, and shower. Paul wants you to sleep at Paul. I, I'm just putting it out there if you need to. He's gonna fall out... all night in his garage smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's never gonna let you back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we'll see you in a few right. days. Okay, see you guys. All right. All right.